Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. It is a family gathering. And that is the way I see it. And it's a precious gathering. And that is the way I see it. For if you really truly understood what was happening in this moment, I think you would be surprised. It seems so linear. A man sits on a stage, the music plays. There are those who sit in front of him. In the classic scenario of presentation on the planet, there is reverence, blessedness, respect. That's the way you see it. And what is really going on is so much bigger. For this day, there is an allotment, permission that you have given for this energy to visit you from the other side of the veil. doesn't happen without people in front of my partner he cannot do this alone he cannot speak out loud with Cryon alone and he never has and that should tell you that there is some attribute going on that is a give and take and there is you see from my perspective the entourage comes in and waits for permission and it's not a man on a stage and it's not necessarily a presentation it's a reunion for in the chairs in front of me are ones I have known for eternity for you are eternal in both directions there is no beginning of you and that ought to tell you the essence and the core that is inside in this moment in these times in this brief thing you call channeling there is energy given information given and while it is given and while the energy is there the third language is above you all it visits every chair and asks the question do you remember human being is not built for total recall of who you are on the other side of the veil for there would be no test would there if we offered empirical proof that all that you hear or are experiencing now is exactly what it seems there would be no test at all And the crowd would be so much larger, you know, if there was proof. No. Instead, it requires individuals to go inside and ask for discernment. Could it be that all that is being presented is accurate and true? Could it be that it's exactly what he says it is that in these moments there is indeed energy flowing from this crack in the veil that you have offered an allotment of permission and in that crack pours to you the energy of home just for a moment in this third language just for a moment it fills your heart and if you're paying attention, it ought to fill you up with truth that you're more than you think. Dear human being, I'll say it again. 
I was with you at the wind of birth. I'd like to talk to you about that tomorrow. I would like to offer to you explanations tomorrow of what happens when you're born. The magnificence of the plurality of a human being and what you give up to come here. To walk around in some ways clueless <laughs> of who you are. And all of this a test of vibration. So that the earth has a chance in an unbiased way of receiving vibration from those who have to awaken on their own. And that is what has happened. All around this planet, there is an awakening going on. And it doesn't make a big noise. And there are no advertising campaigns and <laughs> television shows. slow it is since 1987 it is and you feel it you're more aware than you were before and those around you some are starting to accept what you have oh they may not believe what you believe but they see who you are they see a peaceful human being sitting among those who are in turmoil. They see the way that you handle life. And that makes a difference. There is a prophet inside each of you. And we want to talk about that tonight. And it may not seem like we're going to talk about a prophet inside when I tell you the subject is DNA. But we would like to explain some things to continue the teaching of only a few weeks ago in the top part of Earth, which we're now bringing to the bottom part. But that's, of course, if you look at it in a linear way. Perhaps it's left and right. Depends upon who's looking. <laughs> DNA the very words ring with complexity and chemistry and science and really it's a lot more it's doubtful that science will ever see what I'm about to tell you For there are complements of your DNA and attributes which are simply unseeable in 3D. I have told you in the past that what is missing at this moment in scientific endeavor that would literally change everything is an instrument that would measure an interdimensional field. Once that instrument is developed, and it will be, it is the closest thing you'll ever have to proof of all that we speak of. For in that moment when that instrument is turned upon the various things of the planet, including the human body, there will be revelation. There is fields everywhere. Energy that is invisible, but real. It is here today in so many ways. Gravity is an interdimensional force. Magnetism an interdimensional force. All invisible. All not explainable. But you can't see it. Let me explain some things to you. In order to do this, I must review. And so it is that I review what I have given before so that I may expound upon it and give you things you have not heard. So it is for this group that needs to hear this yet again. And don't be surprised 
that as you hear these things, you don't nod your head in agreement because they're new. You nod your head in agreement because you remember that they are accurate. Would it not be that way? That if you indeed have the Creator inside, that means you were there when the blueprint was cast. And if that is so, would it not be true and accurate that as these things are presented to you, you remember them? That is the feeling. And in the process of the remembering of what I'm going to give you regarding DNA, will you also remember me? Will you remember the love? that comes and pours through this crack in the veil for you? Will you remember what this feels like? DNA, the very premise is chemical. This is what you have in your body, which you believe is responsible for the blueprint of life, but there are attributes in it that I wish to discuss. In review, we say this, that spiritually, we claim that DNA is quantum. That the majority of the chemistry that you can actually see is in a quantum state. And although your science cannot measure a quantum state at this time nor the field around it there is evidence of it we have told you that your DNA in your body carries with it a tremendous amount of information and energy and we speak of DNA as a entirety not as a double helix that is to say 100 trillion pieces and loops of DNA work together to be called DNA, your DNA. And it is unique. It must be absolutely 100% you because of the quantumness of it. For it contains that part of your spirituality, which we are going to start to defining in the publication that my partner is working on now. Not only does it contain the record of all of that you have been on the planet, but your relationship to Gaia, all that you have ever done, the spirituality of, of what you've learned is there. It's imprinted in it. Now listen to me. That means that even those who awaken who have never been spiritual at all don't have to start over for they will awaken to the point at which their DNA holds what they've learned for lifetimes. You awaken the DNA itself, all of the spiritual things that you have learned, they come flying back at you. You own them. This has to be good news to those who wonder what it's going to be like if they come back. Will they have to start over? Will they have to go through the things they've gone through? And some of you have actually said that you do not choose to come back, for it's just too difficult. There is an intrinsic, innate feeling to some of you that this is your last time. And I will tell you, dear ones, that is in 3D, for it is not your last time. Not at all. Because the first thing that masters want to do when they hit the other side of the veil is come back. <laughs> and that's you. And you will. And when you do, you will pick up where you left off. That's in the DNA. It's beautiful. That imprint. The wisdom of the ages is imprinted in the DNA. It's quantum. Isn't it interesting? That now that you have seen the human genome, you see how unique it is. Isn't it interesting 
Unlike any other thing in the human body, DNA is unique. Absolutely unique. Not one human being has DNA like the other. Even identical twins, only a fraction of it is identical. Not the quantum parts. There is more. Within the DNA is the peace of God that you are. The imprint of the higher self is there. The angelic name that I call you is there. That name is not a name in, in linearity. It is not a name spoken in the air with vibration. It is a name that we sing in light. And when it is spoken all around, it vibrates with majesty. And that's the truth. The imprint of that is in there. You carry with you pieces and parts of the lineage from another planet. Those who helped seed you with the spiritual portion, that's there as well. Appropriate it is, beautiful it is, loving it is. All of that is there. And in order for it to be there, it is quantum. Now let us speak of the biology. <clears throat> when the human genome was finished, the project that would identify the genome was finished. All the chemicals in the double helix had been identified. And in that very, very small double helix, three billion parts were suddenly known. So small it must be seen in an electron microscope. So complex that it would have three billion chemical parts. And then the task began. And the science began to study the three billion parts in each one of these double helixes. And the discovery started to be made. They were looking indeed for that which created the human genes. <clears throat> and as they perceived it, there were 23,000 approximately genes that made up the human body that were created by the double helix and they wanted to know how and they looked for the coding the linear coding so that they could understand so perhaps they could they could actually see the blueprint in action and they did and they are but the shock that they got is that less than 5% of DNA created the genes. They saw linearity and they saw the coding. In the protein encoded portion of DNA, less than 5%. And the rest of it seemed to be random. My partner talked about that today, that a quantum state appears to be chaotic, it appears to be random, for there is no linearity to be discovered in a quantumness, none at all. It is one of the things that keeps you from seeing a quantum state is the linearity that you have in your reality, in the paradigm you call reality. So you indeed stare at that which is quantum and it's invisible. But this could not be taken lightly. For science was looking at something which was unexplainable. 90% of DNA seemed to do nothing. And so we start there 
to reveal a few things that you need to know that someday will be confirmed what it is you remember where you heard it <laughs> DNA is far larger than you think and even today science is starting to acknowledge that the 90% of DNA may not be a language of code at all instead it may be what they would call influential chemistry that somehow speaks to the five percent which is the engine of the blueprint think of it somehow ninety percent of the chemicals in a random fashion influence the gene producing part which is the engine which is five percent and that's exactly what's happening And in that 90% is you in a quantum state, all that you are. The spirituality, the Akashic record, the higher self, all of the things, the portal which opens. That which you seek, which you call the other side, so much of it is there. And in a quantum state, it is not actually in the chemicals at all. Think of all of those chemicals together that are quantum as somehow a pipeline, a portal to everything. Instead of thinking in a linear way that there is a compartment or a box where your higher self is, think of it, if you could go there and you could see the quantum state of it, you would go into a place, a pipeline that takes you to everything that is. Now, let us speak of DNA as you've never heard us speak before, that we want published. For it is time you knew. <laughs> Science considers your brain to be consciousness, and it is not. It is the highest thing they can see. It would be responsible for consciousness. And it is not. The brain is a 3D engine that responds to the 90% of DNA. It is the engine of synapse. And it's complicated. And it's very 3D. <coughs> Filled with electrical signals that do as they are instructed or influenced somehow by the DNA. Let us speak about that somehow. 100 trillion parts of DNA working together communicate as one. Science doesn't know how. From that which is in your head to that which is in your toe, somehow it knows it all works together and that is because dear one there is a field around you that is interdimensional created by the DNA and we're going to speak of that field now that field is your consciousness not your brain that what your brain does is in tandem with the DNA your brain dreams the synapse are there and in your deepest REM sleep out come so many things those things are in your DNA some of you are remembering energies that you were all of you dream in a quantum state did you know that that is why there's no linearity things don't make sense those who have passed away and those who are who have not are together yet again looking at one another dreams don't make sense because they're in a in a quantum state now that's your DNA talking that's the Akashic record coming forward and playing the tapes to your brain science does not acknowledge this for it cannot see the field but the DNA is human consciousness and the brain simply is the 3d engine of synapse 
Is there evidence, crying of this? Oh, yes. Very much so. When a human being has an accident and the spinal cord is completely severed, it leaves the body innate. This is the paraplegic. You can no longer move anything. Not a finger, not a toe. And yet, and yet, the heart keeps beating, does it not? Digestion continues, does it not? The kidneys function. Everything keeps going. Now you're told, are you not, that the brain sends those signals through the spinal cord. Keeps your heart beating, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Well, if the spinal cord is severed, what is it do you think that keeps your heart beating? And I will tell you it's the blueprint of DNA. When the, when the engine of synapse is broken, the DNA finds other pathways and instructs the body to continue life force. And that is why the organs continue even though the muscles do not. Interesting, is it not? There is proof there if you look. Science finds it curious, don't they? We are telling you what it is. Therefore, you might say that your, your DNA is actually an esoteric, ethereal brain <clears throat> containing things that your regular brain does not contain. And you'd be right. You'd be right. All manner of things in your DNA are here to look at. The biggest one that we wish to discuss is this, that this field of DNA is knowing. That is to say, now go, go slow, my partner, so you get this right. It is biased for life. It knows who you are. It contains the blueprint of your sacredness. And this is one of the largest tools you have for health, for joy, for opening. It is in the DNA field. It's not the brain. That's where it is. And in that, there is celebration. For in that, it releases you from having to, to create what you think you need. Let me give it to you this way. If you're going to use that field as a tool, now that you know what is in it, if you're going to ask your cellular structure to manifest things for you, All you have to do is contact that which is the quantum part of you and it knows what you need. And so we are asking you to relax the linearity of the lists that you give to God. <laughs> For suddenly we're telling you there is a quantum energy that is the sacred you who knows what you need. And so the meditations and the prayers would be, would be shifted to become wiser. And as you speak to your own cellular structure, to your own higher self, you say, dear spirit, dear DNA, dear cellular quantumness that is in me, examine the life that I have and give me those things which will enhance it. And perhaps that's the healing you came for, dear one. Don't you think I know who's here? And perhaps that's a miracle that will give you joy in the face of the sorrow that you're in right now. Don't you think I know who is here? What you've gone through in these last days? I counted the tears 
you feel so alone not understanding there's an entourage around you the whole time and they would love to touch that field which is your DNA they'd love to touch it but not unless you say so these are the mechanics of spirit we're starting to give you advanced information and there have been those who have who have known how this works and assign sacred geometry to all of it and they're accurate and it's correct but it's a field let me review something with you it's ancient profound and tells this story in your own scriptures in the western world there is a story of a master named Elijah this was the only human being in history to select his time of ascension without death and have it recorded by the one who would take his place and it is and you can see it and I want to review it for in this all the way back then there is proof if you want to call it that of what I'm saying they say Elijah stepped into a field asking Elisha to record what was going to happen now Elijah was a master with great wisdom and knowledge and he was what you would call today an ascended master and in the linearity of humanism there is an entire group of people who expect his return and I have some news for them get out of your linearity he's been back a long time <laughs> for the energy of the masters are part of the energy of this the shift and they intermingle with the vibration of this planet they're all back it's what you're feeling in a quantum state they're in your DNA can don't you don't you sense this don't you sense this Elijah walked into the field with Elijah looking and watching and he did not die instead he claimed his ascension power and he left but not without some fireworks for Elisha said that he turned into a ball of light in the best that he could he could see Elisha described in linearity what it looked like and what it felt like and if you take a look at this you will find that it was not necessarily angels from above that came to get him but more like something happened on the ground and Elijah turned into light and he left and now I'll tell you what that was that was Elijah energizing the field of DNA and it has a name a name given at that moment almost like riding a chariot he was given the name in Hebrew Merkaba. and I will now reveal to you as I have before two times that your DNA field is the Merkaba. it has sacred geometry connected to it for this field this interdimensional field has structure if you could see it you'd see the structure and it's beautiful it's not just a ball it's a double tetrahedron you know 
beautiful it is. And the name Merkaba would indicate that something rides within it. And it is the chariot of your divinity. And each human being has this. Recorded by Elisha, watching the Master ascend. And that's what we wanted to share in these moments. That each one of you has this. Let's talk more about the biology because now it gets a little more complex and with this we'll stop. <laughs> there is an intermingling of the 3D and the quantum that we wish to describe to you now. It's, it's something which is new. For the vibration of this planet and of humanity especially of those who are working with the light is creating a new tool set and you're going to start to see it and it's going to be visible through examination of the 3d chemistry of dna and here it is science is now looking at what they call markers in the protein encoded dna that creates the human genes these markers as they are described by science are those which are the pieces and parts which would indicate perhaps something that you're predisposed to have attributes that might weaken certain cells so that later in life they would create cancer they're starting to see the markers perhaps in certain families where where the mothers and the daughters and their daughters and their daughters were all have the same kind of disease they're starting to see the markers and wonder what they are and why they're there let's talk about the markers for this is the first time we have disclosed this where it is now being recorded it goes like this you're now able to start to change that which is in 3D from that which is in quantum. Blessed are the human beings who realize that as they purify their lives with the light of the Creator, that it will affect the biology of the protein encoded parts. You can erase the markers. You can erase the markers. It's one of the first times which the 3D has intermingled with the quantum so that science can someday look at the same human being knowing that DNA is DNA and it never changes in the human body and it's yours and it's unique and discover you changed it. <laughs> and there will be no answer for them. The joy of this and the beauty of this is that the lineage of the young women who do this will be shown for their daughters will not have the disease nor will the daughters of the daughters. It's a new gift. Can you change those who are your children to be? And you can. I know. The crowd who sits here says, well, it's a little late. <laughs> I've had my children. So why do you sit here and tell me these things? Are you not understanding where this message is going? Are you not understanding the profundity of what happens when old souls allow us to give this information to earth do you not understand that your energy has generated the allotment of allowance for us to come in today and give you this so that young women and young men 
who are light workers each can hear it and know what it means to them? Do you understand you're your own ancestors? Has this occurred to you? I see you as, as history sitting in the chair. From all over the world you are. That's what I wanted to tell you today. You don't have one name to me. I don't even see the gender that you are. I see you in a quantum state. That's why it's so profound that you would let us come in and visit you in this fashion. The woman sits in the chair. <laughs> in front of me. She has no idea the warrior she's been, how big she was when she was a man. And yet she carries around with her the feeling of the warrior. And she knows she's strong. I look at the big burly man. And I see the mother. Toiling with all those children. The man knows it. He can feel it. He's sensitive. Who, who is it you used to be? And how it has affected you today, old soul? I'll tell you how it's affected you today because every single lifetime gives you layer upon layer of wisdom. And it has brought you to the chair today. this is the lifetime you woke up and said there is more a lot more and it brings you as a seeker to a place you say what can I do I'll tell you what you can do you can be compassionate on this planet you can walk around and show your light on this planet you can change the markers in your own DNA Think of who's listening to this message and what it might mean to their children and their children's children. These are tools we told you you would have. And the proof will come down the line. For those who take the DNA imprint and examine it and see it now and later. They will see changes actually in the biological part. Because of what you did in what some say is foolishness of what you did and some say is silly all of this which I have told you today is correct and real will be seen eventually in its own way but I just wanted you to know the sacredness that is here in a structure you think is only chemical far larger it is sacred it is so what are you going to do with it why don't you walk out of this place different than you came in feeling a little more perhaps enabled <laughs> feeling a little better about the possibilities before you There's been a healing in this place. It doesn't always happen. Somebody just got it. Somebody just got it. Somebody just got what they came for. And that makes it all worth it. And so it is.